suggestions made in the industry statement was a proposal to set up a pool of funds by governments and various institutions to provide equity capital for small to medium-sized companies. That proposal didn't manage to get a Guernsey, and the problem of how a small company finds capital for business expansion still remains. Sandy Kay has been exploring one possibility for smaller companies, which will enable them to attract public investment without the formalities and the costs associated with traditional stock exchanges. Most people would agree that Australia's equity and capital markets should be broadened. None more so than Tony Pools, a businessman from Taree in New South Wales, who several years ago formed a consortium to develop a type of unlisted securities market that might provide an alternative to traditional debt funding for small to medium-sized businesses. Today, Oscars, Australian unlisted securities quotation system is ready to go. By mid-year, the computer bulletin board carrying details of unlisted limited liability companies that wish to raise equity will come online. We spoke to Osquiz marketing executive, Rhys Jordan. Rhys, what is the philosophy behind Osquiz and how exactly will it work? Well, proprietary limited companies, or the small and medium-sized business sector in Australia, has never had any real access to equity capital. We understand that around about 20 to 21 percent of the private economic activity is registered on the first and second boards. Now, if we can find a mechanism that allows small and medium-sized companies to access equity capital on a simple basis, um, we can unleash the enormous potential in the economy. So, will it in effect work as a third stock exchange board? No, it's not a stock exchange. It is a quotation system. It's a marriage broker. The quotation system will provide a forum for selling offers and buyers' bids. Buying bids will be received electronically from individuals or from accountants, solicitors, business agents, financial advisors or stockbrokers. Companies joining the system will pay an initial fee at the time of the first quotation, an activation fee when each new equity is offered and a small commission on completion of the equity sale or purchase. Each company will be required to adopt standard articles of association. Stocks will be sold in blocks of no less than 2% of capital. What sort of um, investors do you envisage might be interested in such a scheme? Well, in, initially we would see that the people that would invest in companies that uh, go on the quotation system would have an intimate knowledge of the company. Maybe they'd be um, employees, relatives, suppliers or clients that are wishing to firm up their relationship. Um, the example that was given to me the other day, perhaps if um, a Cobra Hats in Lismore, which everybody in town knows, were able to register their shares uh, on uh, Osquiz, the townspeople would invest in them because their fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers work there. Now, the law on prospectuses at the moment is being tightened up. Will your scheme need prospectuses and how will it fit in with the present new law? We will not be a stock exchange, we will be a quotation system. At the end of the day, we are a marriage broker. And so prospectuses then don't apply in those circumstances? No. The potential investor will have, under the rules that govern the quotation system, access to audited accounts of the potential company he wishes to invest or she wishes to invest in. And will there be reporting requirements by those companies who want their, their shares or their equity for sale listed? Yeah. The companies that, that um, wish to attract equity capital will be required under the Act and through the rules of our quotation system to report much in the same way as they do for the stock exchange. And will there be any system of auditing those companies? They will have to be audited figures. Now, will investors be able to sell shares or investments that they hold in these companies to each other, or will they have to sell them back through the board? No, that's the attractive part about it. I mean, it's been said for many years in Australia that there's nothing more worthless than a minority shareholding in a proprietary limited company. For the first time, we will have the ability to trade those shares on an equitable basis. It's hoped small shareholders will have better rights than they presently have. Under the Act, Osquis is obliged to protect them. The number of shareholders will be limited within an organisation and they will be friendly. There would be no hostile takeovers or the like. Shareholders will have total access at all times to a company's books and its decisions and the company would be governed by a code of behaviour. 
The ability to dispose of unlisted equities by investors, to invest in local businesses which are familiar to the investor, and the increased disclosure requirements should add to investor security and should enhance the attractiveness of such business propositions. Also, access by these businesses to an alternative funding mechanism to conventional debt financing should, over time, reduce the unusually high dependence on debt financing of small to medium-sized firms. To comment on Osquis and to give us his opinion of the Australian Stock Exchange's potential dismantling of the second board, Sandy Kay is speaking to Graham Little, Managing Director of the Melbourne company Green Chip Management. Firstly, Graham, welcome and thanks for coming in. Thank you, Sandy. What are your views on the story that we've just seen on the unlisted securities quotation system? Well, I think a, a move of this nature at this time of the market cycle deserves to be encouraged and obviously the people behind it have put a lot of hard work into uh, uh, examining the